We welcome you here to the Arabian Sports Talk here on 91.7 WEEM. But if this is your first time tuning in, I'm Dawson Perrell. I'm joined here once again by Ryan Davis, Lucas Card, and Aiden Wilson. Before our uh, for before today's episode, we will be looking over to the NBA playoffs, more specifically, just breaking down each of the the matchups, so make your own brackets, our predictions for the upcoming off season. Of course, the regular season just finished up this past weekend, Eastern weekend, uh, with the last couple games. Games in the play-in. Uh, the first uh, pair of play-in games was last night. Uh, Lakers advanced to that seven seed spot, as well as the Hawks in the. Um excuse me, East advancing to the seven seed uh, spot. So starting us off here, we'll just break down each of the matchups I was mentioning. Uh, starting off with the one seeds, of course, you got uh, in the East, you got the Milwaukee Bucks, the top overall seed, uh, best record in the league. And then over in the West, you got Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Personally, I don't have any one, uh, one, eight up upsets. Last time that happened was a long time ago, only happened four times in history. So don't think that's going to be happening this year. No crazy stuff like that. Uh, but Bucks, obviously, I want to take a look at them. A great, great, team this year they've had arguably one of the deepest draws they've had in a while great defense with drew holiday and brooke lopez and of course Giannis. uh so i think they're going to be tough to take down any spot in the playoffs but that first round they should get by easy as well as the nets or the nuggets yeah Giannis is a tough player to guard against and he's pretty good at defense he's been uh fire firing up lately you mean as you said brooke lopez drew holiday we also have to say chris middleton he's been been a key factor on that team you got the you got the bench also. They've been really deep, as you said. But one player you got to look at for the Milwaukee Bucks is Bobby Portis because when Bobby Portis has been playing well, the Bucks have been winning games in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, I personally love Bobby Portis. As we all remember, the 2021 playoffs when he helped the um, Bucks get over the Suns, he really got his shine there just being the glue guy on the offense and defense when needed. So I think we can expect the Bucks to advance, and I would like to see them play the Bulls. Yeah, and then you look over to the uh, second uh, versus seven seed matchups. Uh, first off in the East, of course, you got the Boston Celtics. A lot of people say they have the best roster in the NBA, arguably uh, the best when it comes to just their, uh, excuse me, NIT rankings. They're first in the league. They're first in a uh, point differential. They're third and they're second in offensive rating, second in defensive rating. And with that uh, pair of forwards with Jalen Brown and, um, excuse me, J- Jason Tatum, they're a tough team to take down. Obviously, I have them going over. The Hawks. I think this game could stretch out to maybe six games. I don't think it'll go to a game seven. I think maybe five is a good spot there, but I think the Celtics are just too good uh, for the Hawks to really have any shot at them. Yeah, they added a pretty good guard over the offseason this year with Malcolm Brogdon on, on the Pacers. He's done a little bit on this team, hasn't really started a whole lot of games, but then you also have Al Horford, has been pr- has been doing pretty good lately. They also have Blake Griffin, but I mean, he's not done a whole lot. Just you getting a little too old. Yeah, better just, in peace. Getting, yeah. yeah, just getting the experience for Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. They've had that experience, but not as much as Blake Griffin. But there's also some contract uncertainty for Jalen Brown. He's going into his last year of his deal with Boston, but I still have the Celtics winning. But probably a key player for the Celtics to get involved early is Peyton Pritchard. As Lucas said, Jalen Brown, I mean, his contract, I'd like to see him go to Houston but speaking of the playoff series, I thought that Miami would play against the Celtics, and I was yeah. kind of hoping just to see that Eastern Conference rematch. But I don't think Atlanta has enough offensive threats nor defensive threats to stop, as you said, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Looking over to the West side of things for the 2 7 matchup. I know Lucas has a similar pick to me, but I have the Lakers taking down the Grizzlies in this one. Uh, the 2 7 uh, upsets don't happen often, but you got to look at the Lakers. I mean, since that All Star break, they have the second best record uh, in the NBA. Of course, you got that uh, trio with LeBron AD. They added D'Angelo Russell uh, back to LA over the, the trade deadline. So I think uh, when healthy, this team is a one of the best in the league. And I think, uh, sure, they struggle with the Timberwolves, but Timberwolves. Wolves are a great team. Obviously, Anthony Edwards and Cat can really give you a lot of problems, but they got past them. They now got that two seed. Then for the Grizzlies, I think, sure, you're a very good team. You're great on defense with uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., Dylan Brooks, uh, some great defenders, but you look... um, 
really on their offensive side, they've struggled a bit in the past with really putting the ball in the basket, and I think that's where the Lakers are really going to get them. I think LeBron will uh, uh, lead the way for the Los Angeles Lakers to take down the Grizzlies, and I would say six or seven games. I think it's going to be a close series, but I think Lakers got the skill, they got the athleticism, they got the experience. Of course, LeBron, uh, the most experienced player in the NBA by far, so I think this will be an upset, and the Lakers will move on to that uh, conference semifinals. Yeah, but me personally, I do have the Grizzlies winning this. I mean, just a young team they have that they have the speed to beat the Lakers Lakers really like to set up their offense have LeBron or AD take it down low maybe LeBron take a three but then the Grizzlies they really they really shine on that transition John Morant Dylan Brooks on that transition the the poster dunks have you seen jaw make it's just been insane but the Grizzlies have been struggling with injuries this year with Brandon Clark out for the season with an Achilles injury and Steven Adams is questionable to return for the playoffs, and John Lateta, one of their bench forwards, is also questionable to return. I mean, yeah, as Lucas said, I think that holds the Grizzlies back incredibly, especially on the defensive side. You know, Anthony Davis, LeBron even played the center position in earlier side of the year. I think I think they'll struggle, but with Jaron Jackson Jr., I mean, he fouls out quite frequently against, I mean, in general, so I think AD... We'll give them that trouble, and I think the Grizzlies will win the series, though, if they stay consistent. Yeah, so that one for us split 2-2. So I think that'll be a close matchup, but uh, moving over back to the east to that 3-6 spot, uh, that'll be the 76ers Philadelphia versus the Brooklyn Nets, uh, both pretty close teams. Of course, the Nets, a uh, very, very busy team. That deadline uh, let both KD and Kyrie go, and since then, they've been hurting a bit. We've seen a lot of uh, potential from some of those smaller guys. Cam Thomas, you got to mention him. He'll have a good game, but I think 76ers will roll past this one pretty easily, of course, with that experience experience with James Harden and then that uh, very, very likely MVP with Joel Embiid. Of course, you got to mention some other players. Uh, 76 is looking very dangerous. So I think they're going to cruise by the Nets. I think the Nets could take down one game on them. So I think I got 76ers here in five. Yeah, the Nets are just really young right now. A whole lot of new players, a uh, few rookies now at the starting. But Joel Embiid, as you said, MVP. You got Few few bench players, Tyrese Maxey, people like that, also been shining for the 76ers. I think a very good player these past couple games for for the 76ers who could have a breakout performance in the playoffs is Lewis King, who, who's averaging 20 points a game. I mean, yeah, he did. I think he got a contract because he came from the G League. Same with Mac McClung, but also somebody that stood out, Paul Reed. I'd like to see him get more minutes in the playoffs. And I think the Sixers will win this series just because who can guard Embiid? Yeah. I mean, Brooklyn has threats, but not many outside of Mikael Bridges and Cam Thomas, who, like you said, doesn't get very many minutes. So I think they, I think the Sixers will win in five. Yeah, and as you look over to the uh, west side of things for the 3-6 game, you got the uh, Sacramento Kings and the uh, Golden State Warriors, of course, the big headline for the Sacramento Kings. Their first time in the playoffs in quite a while. Last time they went was 2006, and you got to you got to think, uh, for, for the Warriors, the law edge they hold is that experience. Of course, Sacramento, as I just mentioned, hasn't been there in a long, long time, but not only that, you look more uh, uh, in depth, their players haven't really uh, seen too many playoff appearances, so with that, I'm going to say Golden State's going to take this one. Another upset down there on the right, uh, bottom right side of the bracket for me. I think the Warriors, of course, you got Steph Curry, you got Clay Thompson, both of them uh, top two for leading the league and three pointers made the Splash Brothers. I think they're a very tough team to beat in the playoffs. And I think the Sacramento Kings will get a lot of that. I think, yeah, the Kings, their offense is so efficient. They're really tough to beat, but they run very, very deep in the regular season. They like to run a heavy bench. And I think that's going to hurt them in the playoffs uh, when it's more of a you want to play a lot less guys throughout the playoff series. So I think the Warriors are going to take this one. Uh, I would say it's going to be another close series, but I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be a five or six game. I don't think it's going to go to a seven. I think Warriors got that. Yeah, I agree with you. The Warriors, I feel like, are going to win that series. I mean, you got Curry, Thompson, you said, but who's gonna, the only problem I think is guarding Devonta Simonis yeah. and De'Aaron Fox. There's going to be two threats that's going to be a problem for them. So I have the Kings in seven just because of Mike Brown came from the same coaching system as Steve Kerr. He coached, he was an assistant in in Golden State last year. So it could be a problem for Steve Kerr to face one of his former lineups. And they play very similar. 
I don't think there's many ways that they can stop Curry and Clay, but I know that De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis are going to be a problem, especially with Draymond. But yeah, I have the Warriors advancing in six. Yeah, and you look at the Kings just a bit more, as I was mentioning, very, very good offense. They have the first, uh, they have the best offensive rating in the league. Uh, but again, I think that, uh, as Aiden was mentioning, that postseason, Warriors are just going to be too tough for them. But you move forward now over to the 4-5 matchup in the East. That'll be against the Cleveland Cavaliers and the New York Knicks. Of course, for the Cleveland Cavaliers, it's the first time uh, they'll be really seeing a higher seed, a top half of the seeds uh, without LeBron James. And I think they got a young squad off. Obviously, with Donovan Mitchell, I mean, Mitchell has been there in the past with the Jazz and, of course, his 71-point game. He's explosive and Garland. And I think they're going to take home the Knicks here. I think the Knicks have a chance. Of course, the Knicks have kind of been a feel-good story this year. Uh, Obviously, has struggled quite a bit in the past. But with Julius Randle, uh, along with Jalen Brunson, I think the Knicks will hold up a chance against the Cavs. But I think with that dominant guard spot, as well as a young Evan uh, Mobley down low, along with Jared Allen, I think uh, the Cavs are going to be too much for the uh, Knicks. And I think they'll take them down but I think another close series here I think a lot of these uh, first round matchups will be close I'll say Cavs take them down maybe five maybe six games yeah the Knicks they they've had a few players Julius Randle's having a career season right now been playing really good Uh, but the Cavaliers they've had they have so many weapons Donovan Mitchell Darius Garland the Mobley brothers Jared Allen as you said I mean it's going to be really hard to stop any of those players I have the Cavaliers in seven, so and I feel like Donovan Mitchell can probably take over this series if he has a chance to. I mean, yeah, as Ryan said, Julius Randle having a career season, but the first time, I think it was his all-star debut season, they went to the playoffs and he didn't show up. Therefore, I think the Cavs will win in six, like you said, because the backcourt is just way too strong. I mean, yeah, the Knicks always fumble in the postseason. They do have Jalen Brunson and the runner-up, or he even could win the six-man Emmanuel quickly. But, yeah, like you said, Dawson, and I don't think they can guard the guards. Yeah, but you look over to the west side of things for the 4-5 uh, series. Of course, you got the Phoenix Suns along with the Los Angeles Clippers. Of course, Phoenix Suns, one of those uh, very busy teams around the offseason, added the addition with superstar Kevin Durant, which is obviously going to give them a, a huge favorite uh, heading into the playoffs. But for the Los Angeles Clippers, of course, you got Paul George out uh, for a uh, large margin, not really know when he's going to return. But other than that, Kawhi is there, Russ, uh, Westbrook is there. So you got an experienced uh uh, players, but I think the Suns are just too much of a powerhouse. You got Devin Booker, KD, Chris Paul, Andre A, and I think this is just going to be too much for the Clippers. I think the Clippers with their defense will hold a chance, but I think the Suns will win this pretty easy. I could maybe even see a sweep in four here. Yeah, the Suns, I'm ready to see KD and Russell Westbrook come, go yeah. back at it. It's going to be a fun series to watch, but I also have the Suns winning. It's They're just so, they have a stacked team right now. Chris Paul, KD, as you said, Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden. It's going to be hard with KD's experience in in the playoffs and in the finals. It's pretty pretty good for them. I have the Suns in seven just because of Chris Paul's choking the lead in the first round like they did to the Pelicans and the Bulls and so on and so forth. I mean, yeah, like Ryan said, they have so many offensive threats. The Suns with Chris Paul, Devin Booker, KD. I mean, those people are all like 100th anniversary because the 75th anniversary, you know, I was there like the big team and so many players got um, introduced to it. I think at least Chris Paul, Devin Booker and KD are on that for now. DeAndre Aiden, of course, has a chance to prove himself. But also another thing I would like to say, see Russell Westbrook and KD, like you said, but with Paul George being injured, I think that the Suns have this series in six. Yeah, but you look just more on the Suns here, of course, as I'm mentioning, added on the addition of KD. Um, they, they're still not crazy on the defensive office, uh, offensive rating, but of course, uh, before that, they struggled a bit. Definitely a disappointing team before making that move have definitely improved here towards the end of it. Maybe not crazy, but they're ninth in points differential. They're still top half in pretty much every single stat you can name. Uh, but as Lucas is mentioning with Paul, or excuse me, Chris Paul in those uh, playoffs struggling, and this is a 15th postseason and a lot of the still looking for his first ring so I think that might bring him down but you gotta remember Chris Paul is definitely not the star he's not even uh, the second star he's arguably third so I think Chris Paul will play more of a veteran role uh, spot than rather being that headline that front guy with a lot of pressure on him but uh, you move over to the second round of things Uh, we'll start up with the top left side of the bracket for I think me and everyone else that matchup will be against the Bucks and the Cavaliers I have the Bucks winning this one I think the Cavs have a chance to take down uh, Giannis and Milwaukee but I think as we were 
mentioning earlier, Milwaukee is the deepest we've seen in quite a while with a great bench, and Giannis is looking still very, very dominant, arguably still the most dominant player in the entire league. So I think uh, the Cavs, again, I think they'll have a shot here. I think they'll win one or two games uh, with that guard duo, but I think Bucks defense is just a bit too good, and then Giannis on the offensive end, as I was mentioning, uh, very, very dominant. So I have the Bucks here, and I maybe say five, maybe six games. Yeah, the Bucks have the weapons to guard everyone on this Cavaliers roster, and that they're going to show it with Giannis just absolutely dominating down low against Jared Allen. I mean, it's going to be hard to stop the Bucks throughout the entire postseason. I have the Bucks winning. I have the Cavaliers in seven just because if Darius Gar- Garland and Donovan Mitchell both get hot, they are a very tough combo to stop. I mean, yeah, like Lucas said, I don't think the Bucks have many very defensive guards besides Drew Holiday. So that dual threat on the guard position for Cleveland could bother the Bucks. But like Ryan was saying, I mean, Giannis and Jared Allen, Giannis is arguably the third. No, he is the third in the MVP race this season. So I think he has a lot to prove, maybe get that third MVP, and maybe he'll show it in that series against Cleveland. Yeah, and then uh, as Luke was mentioning, I don't think that's a horrible pick, picking the Cavaliers over the Bucks. I think that's very much a reasonable uh, exit for the first one seed. But again, uh, as uh, three of us were mentioning, I think the Buc- we think the Bucks will take that one. But moving over to the west side of things with the Nuggets and the Suns, I think we all have that one. Lucas, you pick the Clippers first round. No, so yeah, we all have the Suns versus the Nuggets uh, in that one. And personally, I'm going to say the Suns take down the Nuggets here. I think, sure, you got superstar Nikola Jokic with back-to-back MVPs these past two seasons. But I think the struggling with scoring on his part this season, along with uh, maybe a straggling supporting cast for Nikola Jokic, I think the Suns, again, are a powerhouse, and they're going to show it to Denver. I don't think this will be anywhere a blowout. I don't think this will be a sweep whatsoever. I think Nikola, if Nikola Jokic is playing the series, it's not going to be a sweep. So I think the Nuggets will win two, maybe even three games. This one could go to a game seven, in my opinion. But in the end, I think the Suns will pull away with the victory and head to the conference finals. Yeah, Jokic has DeAndre Ayton locked down, but then who's going to guard KD, Chris Paul, and Devin Booker? I feel like it's just too hard to stop. The Suns are going to win that game, that series, I feel like. I have the Suns also winning just because of Nikola Jokic's defensive liability, especially at the center position that took place that you really can't get away with a defensive liability like we saw last year. The Warriors just attacked him. I mean, yeah, as Ryan and Lucas were saying, I would like to see um, Nikola Jokic fold in the playoffs. Just as a Sixers fan, I mean, I personally think he's overrated. If DeAndre Ayton can show that in the playoffs, then Joel Embiid is definitely winning that MVP. But I do have the Suns winning this in six just because of the defense from the Nuggets. Yeah, and you look over uh, back to the east side of things with that... uh, excuse me, that's conference semifinal round again. I'm pretty sure we all have the uh, consensus matchup here, and I think this one would probably be the easiest uh, prediction for the conference semifinals. That is 76ers Philadelphia versus the Boston Celtics. I think this will be arguably the best series this entire playoff uh, will show. I, I think it's a guarantee this one will go to seven games. I think uh, Joel will be battling out such an emotional player in the players we've seen in the past, but for the Celtics, again, a very, very dominant powerhouse of a team. Uh, but with James Harden, yeah, Joel Embiid. I debated on this one. I went back and forth quite a while, but I ended up going with the Boston Celtics. I think 76ers, again, are a very good game, a very good team. Sorry about that. But I think in the end, Boston will pull out with such a dominant offense and such a dominant defense. But again, I think this will be a seven game series. Boston pulls away. Yeah, the, these two teams have really had a very big experience with each other in the past few years going into the playoffs, stuff like that. I mean, it's it's one of the biggest, I, as you said, the biggest uh, matchup of this pro season. I have the Celtics winning in seven, but I mean, Jay- Jason Tatum, the all-star game MVP, it's going to be hard to stop him. I also have the Boston Celtics winning in seven just because what they did to the 76ers earlier in the season, completely locking down the 76ers and they blew and they were able to blow out the 76ers. Yeah, obviously I would like the Sixers to win, but I mean, Boston has a series in the in the regular season. I think it was two and three. I think Boston won that by three games or by one game because they had three. I think, I don't think Tobias Harris can shut down Jason Tatum, but I know that Joel Embiid and James Harden will dominate in that series, but I'm going to have to give it to Celtics in seven. 
Uh, but you move over there to the bottom right side of the bracket of the conference semifinals. Uh, my pick is the Warriors Lakers. I know that is Ryan and Aiden's as well, correct, Aiden? Mm-hmm. No, you have you have someone else. But anyways, I think Ryan. That's so, never mind. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> alone. But anyways, uh, I have the Warriors Lakers uh, for this matchup. But I think the Warriors will pull away again. You got to mention that postseason Warriors a very tough team to beat with Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. I think you got some physical players down low. Of course, Draymond Green a name to mention. So uh, I think Warriors will pull away. But again, I mean, we've seen this LeBron, this Curry matchup so many times. I think this one will be definitely a a media heyday, you could say. But I think Warriors will pull away uh, by their ticket to the conference finals. Yeah, I think me and you, Aiden, have the Warriors Grizzlies going in. And I I mean, that's one of the biggest beefs of this these past two years, Warriors Grizzlies. But I feel like the Warriors are going to win this game. The the beef with Draymond Green and uh, Dylan, Dylan Brooks are just it's going to be a big game but I feel like they can't the Grizzlies cannot hold up for that series. I have the Sacramento Kings and the LA Lakers playing in the second round. I have this I have the Kings winning in seven due to just their three point shooting ability. They're, they have a liability on defense but that made up in the scoring and they've been able to blow out well, the Lakers the past couple times they've played. Obviously, we would like to see LeBron and Curry only in the second round of the playoffs, but I don't think that will happen. As I said, I think Ja will dominate in the first round, but for the Warriors and the Grizzlies, I think the Warriors will pull this one away just because, I mean, I do think the Grizzlies have the regular season record, but in the postseason, as I said, for the first round, you cannot mess around with the Warriors. I think they will advance in six, maybe seven. Yeah, but you look over to uh, back to the East with the conference semifinals. Uh, personally, I have the Bucks Celtics. I think Ryan and Aiden also has the Bucks Celtics. Uh, Lucas, you got Cavs Celtics, but really just taking a look at first off Bucks Celtics, of course, uh, the number one seed versus the number two seed. You don't actually really see it much, um, but I, I think this will be a great series. Another one. I think the East will be really just made up of great series, but I think the Celtics will uh, win this one in another very, very close series. I think you got to look back uh, once again at that uh, stats for the Celtics. They really dominate on all ends of the uh, of the court. But again, I think the Bucks will hold up a chance, but the Celtics will punch their ticket to the finals. Yeah, I have the Celtics winning that game. But the only problem I think they're going to have going through that stretch of se- the stretch of games against the Bucks is who's going to guard Giannis and Brooke Lopez down low. I feel like that's going to be one. Of- uh, going to be tough because Jason Tatum not having a whole lot of size, but it's going to be tough for the Bucks to guard all those guys outside. So the reason I picked the Cavaliers to beat the Boston Celtics in seven is because the Cleveland Cavaliers can go into that smaller lineup where the Boston Celtics have struggled and they can put Robert Williams the third out on the three and kind of isolate him out there. I think Robert Williams is injured this year for the postseason, is he? Or did he come back? Sure. Let me check. I Either you. way, for the second round, I did make a change, and I have the Sixers advancing at seven, just because I know Joel Embiid, when he wants to win a game or he wants to prove something, he can most definitely do that. As we've seen this year, I mean, he was second in the MVP race and pushed himself all the way up to one with, what, the 53-point performance. But in the conference finals, the Bucks versus the Sixers is what I have. I do have the Sixers winning in seven. This will be a very tough series between Giannis and Joel Embiid. But I think the Sixers guard play is too good for the Bucks to handle. So I have the Sixers moving on to the finals in seven. Yeah, Robert Williams is doubtful for the this series. I right, but you look over uh, to the conference finals for the west side of things. Uh, personally, I have the Suns Warriors going at it. Uh, KD and Steph Curry, former teammates, of course, uh, going at it for in the playoffs for really the first time uh, really since. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure exactly, but I'll say that. Why not? Uh, but I think Suns are going to take them down again. Uh, I think Suns are such a dominant team, and I think no one can really guard KD in this situation. Uh, of course, Warriors are a very small team. I remember watching them about a month or so back where they really only played one forward. Draymond Green was at the center. Pretty much all the other lineup was guards, and I think that's really uh, maybe not on that extreme level, but I think that's really their play style. They like to play small, and I think for the Suns, uh, for KD, that's going to be a matchup problem. I think you can lock down uh, Chris Paul, maybe Devin Booker for a couple games, but other than that, I think KD will shine uh i predict him taking home the conference finals mvp and the sun celtics that's my stage uh, for the finals yeah i have the suns beating the warriors in this series 
But I mean, the Suns, they can play both inside and outside, shoot the three, get down low and battle down low. But as you said, the, the Warriors play more mostly guards on in their lineup. Uh, they're mostly shooting team with Curry, Clay, Tom- Clay Thompson. Then you have Jordan Poole coming in later in the game. But I feel like the Suns are going to win in six. I have the Suns in teams, but I have the Phoenix Suns winning in in seven just due to the size and the athleticism of the Phoenix Suns have being able to just dominate against the smaller lineup. I mean, yeah, we do all have the Suns in the finals, correct? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, honestly, I think it's pretty, I think it'll be a good series because, of course, the Warriors, KD, Curry, but as you were saying about the Suns, I mean, KD, I don't think anybody can stop him. I also think Devin Booker will get free for a couple games. He probably will show out. Yeah. But as Ryan said about Jordan Poole, I mean, in the playoffs, it, he doesn't play around in the playoffs. So I think this will go to seven. But I do have the Suns moving on to the finals. Yeah, but then for the finals, uh, personally, I have Celtic Suns. I think uh, Ryan has a well, yeah, Lucas. So everyone, no, you have 76 or <laughs> Suns. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, obviously for me, I think the Suns will take this one home. Just opening it up. I'll explain my reasoning. First off, just looking back to the regular season uh, versus uh, just Celtics, Phoenix Suns, their records tied at 1-1. The Celtics won the first, Suns won the second. That would, the second one was after the deadline uh, or it might have been just before. But anyways, I think the Suns will win this one again. KD will be a problem, but I think this series will go down in history as one of the best. I mean, you got two powerhouses of a team with Devin Booker. Uh, Devin Booker, of course, we've been mentioning his name quite a bit. KD, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, uh, compared to Jason Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown. So I think the Suns will pull away once again with this one, take home a ring. Uh, and I think KD, again, you look to his postseason success, you look at their all-star power. I think if the Celtics have a chance, uh, you got to look back to last season. They lost in the finals, so I think they're going to be wanting, they're going to be having a bit more motivation than the Suns, but I think in the end, uh, Suns are just too tough. I have them winning in a, another six or seven game series. Yeah, they're, these are two of the most stacked rosters in the league right now. But I do have the Celtics winning in the finals in seven. Uh, as you said, they're going to be a lot more motivated. Jason Tatum just going to be very hungry for that win. And as for the past, I can't remember, I think it's four years, the All-Star Game MVP has won the finals. Yeah. So I feel like that could lead into this year. So I have the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Phoenix Suns playing in the finals, and I have the Cleveland Cavaliers taking home the ring in seven games, but they played earlier in the season and lost to the Suns twice, but I think they can come back and win four games against the Suns team. I think the Cavs are definitely a dark horse in the oh, series yeah. playoffs, but to stop the 76ers bias, I do have the Suns winning the series or the final, shall I say, in, I think it'll either be six or seven, but some things we can be expecting or even looking out for, Chris Paul and James Harden, they did play together in Houston, so if they go against each other in the finals, I think that'll be a game or a series rather to see, but with KD and Tobias Harris, as I said, our small forward, I don't think, I don't think Tobias Harris can stop really anybody in these playoffs, and I do think that, that we need to move him over the off season. But an argument to be made, Joel Embiid and DeAndre Ayton, I mean, they could go at it. I don't think DeAndre Ayton is up there as a like defensive season, at least this season. But yeah, I do have the Suns winning just because of how deep they are, and they have four stars on their starting lineup. Yeah, but just looking here at all of our final winners, of course, Aiden and I picked the Suns uh, for the Lucas pick and Cavaliers. You're mentioning very much of a dark horse heading into it. And again, I don't uh, horribly like that pick. I think obviously heading into it, it, it you're definitely got the the uh, most the team that definitely doesn't have the best chance of winning. But again, we've seen uh, some crazy playoffs in the past. Crazy teams that aren't really uh, anywhere projected to win, win it. So I think, and with the Cavaliers postseason success, obviously with LeBron in the last decade or so, I think they got that program uh, for postseason success. They got some great fans up there in Cleveland, so I think they'll have a chance. Ryan picking the uh, Celtics, just breaking it all down. Uh, Celtics, of course, great team, and I think they'll definitely have a shot at it as well, uh, but we'll just leave up our final brackets here as we close. We hope you all enjoyed uh, just as much as we did talking for you. You can expect uh, every episode around Monday is at least the schedule as of now uh, for the Arabian uh, talk show, but for Aiden Wilson, Lucas Card, and Ryan Davis, I'm Dawson Peril signing out. We hope you all have a wonderful day.